Hello, hello, hello. Happy Friday. What do you have planned for the weekend? Tell me. <laughs> Tell me everything that's going on. I am really happy right now. I'm having, like, my energy feels a little bit low today. Um, which is fine. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but when I was getting dressed to show up here, I did the thing where like throwing everything out of my closet and I pulled out a dress and a long sweater and one of my favorite necklaces, something I haven't done in quite some time. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling fancy. I'm feeling really comfortable. <laughs> And I'm happy that I'm comfortable because, wow, do I have something to share with you today. I am taking us on a walk. That's my thing. That's what I do. I make you exercise. <laughs> but I do. I, I think of this life as a walk. And today our walk takes us to my friend Cindy, who, when I met her, I realized this woman moves through life differently than I do. She just moves through life. Things affect her differently. She's just, there's something different about this woman. And the more that our friendship developed, the more that I got to observe up close her experience of life. And what I came to conclude, and this is me, Kathy, completely independent, observing things in nature and coming to a conclusion. And my conclusion is this, that who we are creates our experience. And then I went and studied that. But who she is created her ex creates her experience. It was creating a different experience than the one I was having. I seemed to push and pull and smack against and fall apart over life and experiences in life. Cindy does not. But I would observe that. The other thing that was really noticeably different about the way she moves through life is, you know, you get together with your girlfriends and you 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 fix all the problems in the world. You see problems in the world. I mean, we do. We're human. That's just the way that we, we are. But, you know, I want to tell her about this boy that I was dating because he was a boy, not a man. But, you know, I want to tell her and then I want to say like, well, he said and then he, she did. and But Cindy didn't do things like that. She would share, I'm having a, a bit of a rough patch at the moment in this part of my life, or this building thing happened and ah, but then it was over. There was no complaining. There was reality is what it is, but also, and I'm not really thrilled about it at the moment, but also I know it's going to work out. I would like some of that. And let me, there's, here's an example of we all, a whole bunch of girlfriends met and then we went to a restaurant, we went to dinner. And at, when we arrived at dinner, Cindy noticed, I don't have my purse. Can I borrow your lipstick? And for me, if I had been out, in that moment in time, if I had been out with 30 women and I didn't have my purse, my reaction would have been much bigger than that, or it would have been internalized really deeply. Like, I'm not secure, I'm not safe. I don't, how am I going to pay? I couldn't ask someone to pay for me because I was a bonehead and I made a mistake. She moves, moved through life differently than I did. And I was curious, what is going on here? And one of the things that she gave me, and this was in the beginning of our friendship, I was dating a guy and I was distressed. I was upset. And she offhandedly, as we're walking through a door, she just said, oh, you need to learn how to receive. What? 
people give things and we take them and like how what do you mean i have to that's receiving i know how to receive someone you you open the door for me and i say thank you i received the open door i know how to receive <laughs> but the fact that her life looked that way and my life looked and felt this way kept me going and of course i am just on a spiritual quest my entire life i'm looking for answers and why doesn't any of this make any sense so driven in that direction anyway, I kept looking and I kept getting more and more curious about what does she mean by receiving? Oh, well, it's masculine and feminine energy dynamics. What? 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 What is that? And what a gift. Just offhanded. This is how we impact and affect each other. Women are amazing. Men are amazing also. So she says this to me. And I'm like, well, and now being in the uh, in and of and around the coaching industry since 2007, I knew what to do. I knew where to go. I turned to my industry. I turned to coaches. And I was like, what? Masculine and feminine energy dynamics, relationships, relationship coaching. What is wrong with me? Fix him. And I took eight months. And I studied, I studied in, in heterosexual relationships, the interplay and exchange of masculine and feminine energy dynamics. And I played creating my own relationships and I would see this stuff reflected back to me. And what a gift, because from that whole relationship period of my life, I was given another huge gift in my quest for understanding. And we'll talk about that. That's a deep, deep context. And I want to save it. But I want you to know that just by the, but just by being my friend, look at how this woman gave so much to my life, enriched my life and enriched my quality of my life. Okay. So I'm doing the relationships. Mm -hmm. Doing the relationship thing, I'm, I'm practicing the energetics, the dance, the interplay, and I'm practicing this with men in my life and crazy stuff is showing up and it's just reflecting my own inner state back to me. <gasps> wow, unexpected gift. And then I meet this man and we end up having this beautiful, loving, caring, passionate love affair. And it was perfect. It started perfectly. The journey together was beautiful. We, I learned and practiced and played and had such a great experience. And then the relationship ended on a beautiful note and it was perfect. The whole experience. All because my, my friend Cindy turned to me and instead of saying, oh, that guy is such a jerk and he's such a meanie and why don't we fix him and make him, you know, instead of saying any of that, she said to me, you, my friend, need to learn how to receive. And I trotted off and I learned how to receive and I was, and I created a beautiful partnership for, uh, for a number of years. Oh, and that, that's, there's so much that this woman just opened. And this is what happened. So if you're in my world right now, you're here for a reason. There are no mistakes. I don't know why you might be here. You might not know. I had no idea why I met Cindy. There were so many things that this period of my life just gave to me and that I didn't know that I needed. Life always has our backs. It's always working out in our favor. Now here's something else that Cindy gave me that was so unexpected. During the, you know, the relationship before I had the great love affair, I had, I was dating a man and I, I said to Cindy, oh, blah, 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 mm -hmm. that girl. And she said to me, oh, his having is really low. That's so sad. Okay, wait a second. I am the one who needs to be consoled here. He's a jerk face. 
face. <laughs> he's a mean he's a jerk. He's he's narcissistic and emotionally unavailable, and he's all of the words that we say. But the way that she, I mean, like, right? We get a little we get a little cray cray. But she just saw the situation from an entirely different perspective. Oh, his having is really low. What does that mean? What What do you mean his having is low? Well, let's fix him so that he can have me. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What about my having? What about my having? Where is my having? Is my having low? Is my having high? What does this even mean? And so she gave me the gift. She said, you, I, I go to the clairvoyant center of Hawaii. You might find them fun and interesting. Like I need more education, right? So off I ran to the clairvoyant center of Hawaii, where I studied visualization, meditation, and psychic abilities for a year. All because he has, his, his having is low. And I learned my world exploded. It's like it blossomed into these beautiful flowers because I fell in love with meditating. I fell in love with visualizing. I fell in love with, with playing around with different inner workings and inner scenarios. And I got, I fell madly in love with doing what work internally meditating and then experiencing a shift in my external world. Now I'm not saying I created a magic wand and started creating magic things in my life, but it was enough at that period in my life that I saw a correlation between the way I am and the way my life is. I saw it reflected in my friend Cindy and I saw it in my life and then I, I felt it and experienced it in experiences. <sighs> yeah. That feels really complete for me right now. It feels complete. It feels like just to close it, I was given the concept in a way that I could receive it, that who I am, how I treat myself, how I show up in the world, and what I think is going to happen. I forgot how I started that sentence, but that, that was the gift I was given I, to seeing that who I am is impacting and affecting what is happening in my life. I was given the gift of being introduced to masculine and fem, not even introduced, but for studying for just about a year, the masculine and feminine energy dynamics and the, the things that, that I received in my own life, in my own space, it's hard. It's I'm, it's hard for me to do this live. You can tell right now I'm stumbling, and the reason is it's overwhelming what I received from this relationship, from this friendship. It's and and I'm realizing it a lot in real time. What a gift knowing this woman was, and what a gift her way of being was the shifts and changes that she invited me into in my own life and the way that they are still playing out because now I am here in front of you talking to you and telling you I have become my own best friend. It's a walk I do every single day and it involves all of these lessons I have learned from all of my best friends. It includes learning the how to manage to be in my own feminine energy and when I slip into masculine energy and the impact it has on my life and the thing around me. And then to be able to play back and forth to find the sweet spot where it works best for me. To go internal inside and look at my havingness and say, maybe I want to increase that. And what are the ways that I can do that? And these are all topics I'm going to be 
well, I've created a walk for us. It's a one month walk. And this walk covers all of these topics. It meets you where you are and then expands and grows and deepens these topics for you in your life. And I'm hosting a masterclass on February 13th where I want to really take more time and be a little bit more deliberate about some of these topics. And I'd love to have a conversation where you show up and you say, I heard this in your live and I go, having? Get out of town. Meditation? Tell me more about this because I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> and you're not, you're not doing any of it wrong. Thank you so very much for being here. I really appreciate you. And I think you can feel that, can't you? That the people in my life are the most important thing to me. I love you. If you caught the replay or if you're here live, please let me know. I want to say hello to you. I want to welcome you into my world and I want to know what's up for you. I'm building a community of women who are their own best friends, who stay on their own side, who are falling more deeply in love with life exactly as it is and who are learning how to co-create, to be a conscious co-creator instead of a unconscious co-creator. Until I see you tomorrow, take great care have a, and have a great time. Mm.